Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! Happy Valentine's Day to you and your loved one. I'm wishing you all the best. Now I know residency interviews are still going on for some of you, and for others, you're done and ready to rank your preferred programs. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the ASHP match process by talking about different phases, and at the end, I will demonstrate an example of how candidates and programs are matched through the matching algorithm. Now here is a general overview of the residency application process. You apply to a residency program of your choice through forecasts, and if everything goes well, they call you for an interview. After the interview, both the applicants and programs must rank their preferred site and candidate respectively. Then after that, the ASHP match kicks in. Now the ASHP match process simply matches applicants with residency programs. And the rules for this matching algorithm is submitted by the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. And they submit these rules to the National Matching Services, who will then execute the algorithm. Now, the ASHP match is broken down into different phases. Majority of us know that it's broken down into phase one and phase two, but is there a phase three? So for phase one, here are the important dates for you. And please keep in mind that these dates are for 2020. So February 10th, applicants and programs can submit their rankings on forecasts. And February 28th, final date of the ranking submission is due. Nobody will be allowed to rank after this date. And on March 13th, the results are released. Please keep in mind that when you're signing up for forecasts in order to apply for pharmacy residency programs, they require you to sign up for the matching process simply because the programs that you're applying to through the forecast also signed up for the match process. Now here's a visualization of exactly what I received when I got matched with a program about two to three years ago. For applicants and programs that were not matched in phase one, they still have a chance. For applicants and programs that didn't participate in phase one, you still have a chance. New programs that were established after phase one can still participate in phase two. Unfilled position of the programs after phase one are listed on this website here on March 13th. Now on March 17th, applicants can use forecasts to begin to submit applications for programs participating in phase two. Please keep in mind that phase two is a much faster process than phase one. So for example, phase one, after a program selects you for an interview, they may give you one to two weeks before you come in for the interview. But for phase two, after they select you for an interview, they may give you, let's say, two to three days. On March 23rd, applicants and programs can submit their rankings. And April 1st is the final date for the ranking submission. On April 8th, the results are released. Now is there a phase three? Kinda. There's something known as the post-match phase. On April 9th, programs participating in this phase will be listed here. Applicants or programs who did not match in phase one or two can participate. Applicants who never registered for phase one or two and are now considering a residency could still participate and they apply through forecasts. On April 15th, this is the ASHP recommended date for the programs to make offers to applicants. Now a little bit about the matching algorithm before I actually execute the example. Candidates and programs rank their preference in numerical order. The program must also list the number of available positions and the matching algorithm will then begin. A key concept I want you to keep in mind when I'm going through the matching algorithm, there's something known as a tentative match. Applicants that are matched initially with a program at any point during the matching algorithm may be removed to make room for a different applicant who is more preferred. Now here we have the matching algorithm and on the left we have three candidates, Peter, Stewie, and Roger. And on the right we have three programs, Hospital A, Hospital B, and Hospital C. And each hospital had the number of positions that are available. Now the matching algorithm begins by trying to put Peter with his preferred hospital. Peter has hospital B ranked as number one. And as you can see, hospital B also has ranked Peter and they have a position. If hospital B did not rank Peter, there's no way Peter can be matched with hospital B. And if they didn't have a position at all because it was filled, then Peter cannot be matched with hospital B. But since that is not the case, 
Peter is tentatively matched with Hospital B, as I have demonstrated here on the right. Next, we have Stewie. Stewie's preferred hospital is Hospital A, and Hospital A also has Stewie ranked. So in this case, Stewie can be tentatively matched with Hospital A. Next, we have Roger. Roger's preferred hospital is Hospital B, and Hospital B also has Roger ranked. So in this case, Roger can be matched with Hospital B. But hold on for a second. As we look here on the right, Hospital B is tentatively matched with Peter, and they only had one position. But since Roger is actually preferred by Hospital B, Peter will be removed and replaced with Roger. So now, since Peter doesn't have any programs that he's matched with, we can move down his rank and order list. Next, we see that he has Hospital A rank, and Hospital A also has Peter rank. So therefore, Peter can be matched tentatively with Hospital A. Now, since we went through each candidate and tried to match them with your preferred program, and they found a spot in this case, the matching process is complete. As we can see here, Hospital A had two positions, which they were able to fill. Hospital B had one position, which they were able to fill. And Hospital C had one position, but they weren't able to fill it. Simply because the candidates had preferred programs, and based on the algorithm, they were placed into their preferred spots. All applicants must be considered for best tentative matches before most preferred matches are finalized. Hospital C can participate in phase two of the match process. Now, I hope this video was helpful and it gave you a brief overview of how the ASHP match process works. This should help you kind of visualize how the whole thing happens. And sometimes depending on how another candidate ranks the preferred programs that you want to go to, it may increase your chances of getting into that program. So I guess you could say that there's a little bit of luck. If this video was helpful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Make sure to connect with me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.